it's 2035. It's astonishing how far we've come in just 16 short years. Even though solar activity decreases by 1% and the Earth is experiencing a mini ice age, innovation hasn't stopped cold. We're now having breakthroughs in finding the cure for aging. DNA vaccines have revolutionized immunization. Human enhancement has evolved to implants that can now upgrade our senses. And the average human is now using 16 connected devices. As for us designers, well, the future of design is no longer on a monitor. It's in a command center. Hello, I'm Kiwi, your personal assistant. I will guide you through your interactions with the Google Desk. What type of designer are you? Optimizing desk layout for UX design. By interacting with end users, a better sense of the design's impact can be assessed. Putting focus on the user means leaving aside personal perspectives, assumptions, and expectations. The wish for the project is to create something useful that solves a real problem. That's why the project is kicked off by putting together a project brief in order to set team goals. The brief covers elements such as client information, possible challenges, limitations, target audience, communication goals, and possible features. Maximum impact is achieved by enabling other designers to perform their best work. Competitor analysis is done in order to understand the existing tech market. Products such as the Dell Canvas Display, the Microsoft Surface Studio, and multi-touch screens come close to what designers need. Quantitative research is conducted in the form of desk research. Articles, publication, blog posts, and tech magazines are the main source for desk research, which is important in order to get a realistic view about how designers work. However, it is hard to predict the way design will be in 15 years. Interviews are carried out in order to validate prior findings. Two designers and two developers are questioned about their process, the challenges they face, and the way they communicate with each other. This step is important in order to emphasize with users and get in their heads to identify real problems they're facing. From research findings, an outline of the concept starts to form. The project brief is revised and completed. The client is found. The goals are set. The brief is important because it acts as the stakeholders' needs that also have to be considered in the design process. As for the design guidelines, they are specified when the creative brief is compiled to be referred back to in different stages of the process. Target audience includes designers that are tech-savvy and are not afraid to learn new software to potentially enhance their work with a focus on UX designers. To facilitate brainstorming and keep the focus on future tech, inspiration is drawn from sci-fi movies. Titles such as Oblivion with its ultra-sleek UI work and Minority Report with its excellent screen interactions are the basis for the desk display. To summarize all user research findings, methods such as the value proposition canvas and user journey are applied. They show the different stages the users interact with the desk and provide an outside perspective on the process and highlight development priorities. The user journey reveals how well the customer experience matches with the brief promise. Because design is all about the process, the stages of our user journey are tailored to the design process thinking stages. Each step is broken down into substages. Possible tools are identified, touch points are defined, and pains are turned into opportunities. Users' needs are turned into user stories in the jobs to be done format and compiled into a Kanban board along with all the ideas from brainstorming. Each story is broken down into its elements, digitally translated into features, and then organized in design sprints based on complexity and priority. Sketches are an important step in the design process, as they are free of tech limitations. It's all about giving life and form to a multitude of ideas. All in all, 15 features from the Kanban board are sketched out while being mindful of the guidelines of the creative brief. In order to get vital initial validation from the end users, the sketches are turned into a paper prototype, which represents the best way of involving users at an early stage. However, it needs imagination and you cannot test interactivity with it. 
Or can you? The paper prototype is a scale representation of the desk with a size of 80 by 160 centimeters, which represents the average desk size, and it is tested with four members of the target audience. Goals for the testing session include observing first impressions, testing relevance of the display modules, and users' understanding of the concept, among others. Moodboards help formulate the theme of the project and make sure that the design is aligned with the intended project vision. The project has a futuristic vibe, however, there are no guarantees that our vision of the future is what the future will look like. That's why elements that don't go out of style have been chosen. The style follows the Google Material Design Dark Theme guidelines, with a contrast ratio of at least 15.8 to 1 between dark surfaces and the body text, which is dark gray in order to reduce eye strain. High emphasis text is at an opacity of 87%. Lighter tones of the original colors, set in the 200 to 50 tones, have better readability on a dark theme. The biggest challenge is designing on a such a large surface. The canvas display is 4210 by 2380 pixels. To tackle this, the design is organized on a grid system containing different modules that can be moved around to customize the surface based on each user's preference. The default desk layout is optimized for UX design based on the design thinking process steps and user research and usability test findings. The style tile is applied to the sketches with a focus on geometric elements. This is because geometric patterns are timeless. They all feel elegant and modern. The modules use a landscape orientation for more surface area to work with, and the UI is kept as clean as possible to avoid overwhelming the user. The focus mode, turns off all other options except the active canvas. A digital prototype is built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for interactivity. A CSS grid system is created to combat the challenge of designing for such a large surface, as well as smaller displays. The grid creates interchangeable modules that give the possibility of creating different layouts with these. JavaScript is used for the open software sliders and flipping the modules on and off. Moving forward with the project, the next step would be refining the digital prototype, finding an appropriate display canvas and performing usability testing on the digital prototype to observe interactivity, intuitiveness, and ease of access. Future changes pending validation include holographic representations for the desk assistant and the 3D center, adding a quick bar for quick searching, and hovering over elements to reveal their content, among others.